AMD finally announced their next-gen Ryzen 7000 CPU lineup, and if you are subscribed to any hardware channel here on YouTube, you couldn't have missed it. Since there are already dozens of recap videos out there, and you can watch the entire keynote on AMD's YouTube channel anyways, this video will have a slightly different focus, specifically looking for things you might have missed. Of course, we will still start the video off with a really quick overview of what AMD actually announced. But then we will talk about IPC, the specific process node AMD is using for Zen 4, new power features brought in from Zen 3 Plus, and implications for AMD's upcoming Zen 4 based mobile products like Phoenix Point or Dragon Range, and other interesting things I found. Without further ado, let's dive right in. AMD announced four new Ryzen 7000 CPUs, which will be launched on September 17th, 12 days later than originally suspected. The flagship Ryzen 9 7950X with its 16 cores and 32 threads at up to 5.7 GHz and a 170W TDP will launch at $699 MSRP, $100 below the launch price of the 5950X. The 12 core 24 thread 7900 clocks at up to 5.6 GHz and has the same 170W TDP. The MSRP of $549 is exactly the same as the launch price of the 5900X. The 8 core 16 thread 7700X clocks at up to 5.4 GHz and lowers the TDP to 105 watts. With an MSRP of $399, it's $50 below the launch price of the 5800X, but $100 above the 5700X. And finally, the 6 core 12 thread 7600X with up to 5.3 GHz and the same 105 watt TDP starts at $209 the same starting price of the 5600X. Now with that out of the way, let's start by looking at the IPC of Zen 4. Less than three months ago, AMD stated that Zen 4 would offer about 8% in IPC uplift over Zen 3, which wasn't bad by any means, but not comparable to the large increases AMD achieved in the past with Zen 2 and Zen 3. To everyone's surprise, including mine, AMD announced the actual IPC uplift was around 13% much higher than previously thought. And in combination with the fast clock speeds, AMD claims a 29% increase in single thread performance. If this claim is confirmed by independent reviews, and I don't doubt AMD as they have been on point in the past, Zen 4 actually offers the largest increase in single thread performance since the original Zen architecture. Of course, it will be impossible to beat the 52% IPC uplift Zen offered over Excavator back in 2017, but I've looked at the intergenerational IPC and clock speed increase of each Zen iteration and Zen 4 does seem to come out on top. Zen Bloss was only a minor tweak with a 3% higher IPC and about 5% more clock speed. Combined, that's about 8% more thing as performance for Zen Bloss over Zen. Zen 2 was a major step forward and offered about 13-15% to more IPC. Combined with the increasing clock speeds, AMD claimed a single thread uplift of about 21%. Zen 3 was a IPC monster with a 19% increase over Zen 2, though the clock speed gain was rather small, at least on paper. In some workloads, Zen 3 could actually hit about 10% higher clock speeds, which would put it in a similar realm of performance improvements to what Zen 4 is supposed to offer. Still, the official claim of 29% single thread performance gain is the highest since the original Zen CPUs. And the crazy thing is, most people were kind of underwhelmed, at least it seemed like it. If Zen 4 offers a similar or even a higher performance increase over Zen 3, as Zen 3 offered over Zen 2, it's much more than I would have guessed, and definitely a positive surprise. I think some of the tame reactions are due to the fact that a large part of the performance gain is based on increased clock speeds, which comes with the negative effect of a higher TDP, while Zen 3 delivered all of its gains within the same power envelope and process node as Zen 2. On the point of process nodes, let's take a look at the 5 and 6 nanometer design Zen 4 is based on. AMD is continuing their close relationship with TSMC and the Ryzen 7000 CPUs are actually the first Ryzen CPUs fully based on TSMC. Zen and Zen Plus were still produced by Global Foundries in a 14 and later 12 nanometer node. With Zen 2, AMD made a switch to TSMC's N7 node, but only for the CPU chiplets. The I.O. die was still produced in Global Foundry's 12nm process, and Zen 3 didn't change any of that. 
The CPU chiplets are still based on N7 combined with the same 12 nanometer I.O. die. With Zen 4, AMD is switching to a full TSMC design using the new N5 HPC process node for the CPU chiplets and N6 for the I.O. die. If we take a closer look at this N5 HPC node, we can see that it is an N5 derivative which is optimized for high clock speeds. TSMC claims a 7% increase in speed over the default N5 node. This plays a big part in why Zen 4 is able to reach such high clock speeds. Of course this is only part of the equation. The design itself also has to be optimized for faster switching and most likely includes so-called dark silicon, which is basically empty parts of the chip to allow for more space, better heat transfer and to reduce energy density. On the note of density, according to Anxonomics, a Zen 4 CCD contains 6.57 billion transistors which is a whopping 58% uplift over Zen 3. Since we know that a Zen 4 chiplet is 71mm2 in size, the transistor density is about 92.5 million transistors per square millimeter, which is about twice as much compared to Zen 3. But it is quite a bit below what Apple achieves on TSMC's N5P. Part of that is most likely again due to the dark silicon and the optimizations for high clock speeds. A smaller chiplet would be even harder to cool, especially with the increase in power consumption than 4 brings. One point why some people are a bit hesitant about Zen 4 is the increase in TDP. Instead of offering 65 and 105 watt parts like before, AMD increases the TDP values to 105 watt for the 6 and 8 core models and 170 watts for the 12 and 16 core parts. While this is a rather large increase, and I'm not a fan of higher power consumption myself, I think we should wait for VViews to form a final opinion on the power draw of the Ryzen 7000 CPUs. The introduction of AVX512, which does increase power draw quite a bit, means AMD has to plan for a larger power envelope. In addition, these TDP numbers will only be hit during heavy multi-thread workload. If you are running lower threaded applications, like games for example, the TDP values should be out of reach. If a 7950X needs to be under full AVX512 stress to reach its 170 watt TDP limit, it's a different story compared to if it hits the same power at medium load. That's why I need more information to form my final opinion. I'm sure Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unbox will deliver as expected once the review embargoes lift. If you watch the AMD presentation carefully, I'm sure you also noticed AMD's power efficiency claims, especially at lower TDP values, which brings us to our next point, AMD's upcoming Zen 4 mobile parts especially Dragon Range and Phoenix Point. Dragon Range will most likely just be a laptop version of Zen 4, with the same chiplets and I.O. die just optimized and packaged for a mobile socket. As with every CPU, even if it's optimized for higher clock speeds, the highest efficiency can only be achieved at lower clocks. In combination with the new 5 nanometer node, even if it's the HPC variant, Zen 4 can achieve amazing power efficiency at lower clock speeds. AMD compared the new 7950X to the 5950X and the results are pretty amazing. While overall performance is highest at 170 watts, that's also where Zen 4 commands the lowest efficiency advantage. Going to a 65 watt TDP for both CPUs, Zen 4 already offers up to 74% more performance and I'm pretty sure this trend continues further down to 45 and 35 watts. This means that AMD can offer a 45 watt mobile version of the 7950X with basically over 74% of the performance of a 5950X, maybe even much more depending on how far the N5 HPC node and the Zen 4 architecture continue to scale. Imagine a Ryzen 7000 mobile chip with 16 cores, a 45 watt TDP, and performance close to a desktop 5950X. AMD will be able to offer productivity monsters in laptop size. I'm already looking forward to a comparison with Apple's M2 Ultra. This is in part due to AMD implementing some of the features in Zen 4 that got introduced with Zen 3 Plus based on rampant parts earlier this year. If AMD is able to take a 7950X, lower the TDP to 45 watts or less and create this really fast and efficient mobile CPU, basically without any effort, just imagine what it will be able to deliver with Phoenix Point, a APU on a power optimized 4 nanometer process specifically designed for mobile. I honestly think Zen 4 might be even more impressive in the mobile space with small, fast and efficient chips. Talking about small chips, Zen 4C is also coming up and could offer a really interesting value proposition. Yes, it's only targeting the server market, 
but it could show us AMD's idea of a little core. Zen 4 is already tiny compared to a Golden Cove core as used by Intel's Alder Lake. Though part of that is due to the transistor density advantage of the new 5 nanometer process. Still, the difference is astonishing. A Zen 4 core is only using about half the area of a Golden Cove core. Zen 4C is another 50% smaller, resulting in a really tiny core. I think a single Zen 4C core won't be that far off in size compared to Intel's Gracemont, but much faster at the same time. Something I also wanted to mention is the implementation of AVX512. Zen 4 doesn't have a 512 bit wide execution unit. AVX512 is supported via so called double pumping. It offers the full hardware compatibility, but won't achieve the same performance gains as with true 512 bit execution. I think it's funny that Intel had to disable AVX512 with Auto Lake and their upcoming Raptor Lake CPUs, while AMD does support it with Zen 4. The tables have truly turned and if you can make use of AVX512, Zen 4 is the obvious choice. I also did take a look at the footnotes. So far, I haven't found any shady stuff, but the gaming benchmarks of Zen 4 have been done with AMD's Memory OC Expo enabled. So I guess with default memory settings, the results should be coming in a little bit lower. In the end, I have to say I am positively surprised. Zen 4 offers a sizable performance uplift and increases power efficiency at the same time. Of course, it would have been nice to keep the same TDP values as Zen 3, but with high clock speeds and AVX512 support, it's just not feasible. If you buy a Zen 4 CPU, the best thing to do might be to lower the TDP in the Ryzen Master software and you could achieve even better efficiency at similar performance levels. The Zen 4 core has a lot of potential, especially the upcoming mobile parts Dragon Range and Phoenix Point might turn out to be the true champions of AMD's 7000 series. When it comes to the competition, Raptor Lake could beat Zen 4 in raw performance, but so far it looks like Intel and AMD will fight toe to toe. I don't see anyone claiming a clear victory here. If you are buying a new system from scratch, M5 could offer better value with support beyond 2025, while Meteor Lake will require a new socket, Raptor Lake is basically a dead end. But since most users don't update on the same motherboard anyways, and Raptor Lake will be good for years to come, this might not be an issue for you. It looks like Intel will reveal their 13th gen CPUs on the same day Ryzen 7000 will launch and I'm really excited to see final benchmarks. It's going to be a hot September for sure and as usual, I will keep you updated along the way. I would like to know what you thought about the Zen 4 reveal. Were you surprised by the larger IPC gain? And what do you think about the TDP increase? Leave a comment down below. I always like to read your comments. I hope you found this video interesting and see you in the next one.